Hello everyone, this is another tutorial for the Flux image generation model. Today, Xlab's team just dropped the Flux IP adapter model, and there you go, we've got the first version of the Flux IP adapter model. You can now download it through the Hugging Face page link provided in the description below. This is the first version of the IP adapter for Flux. As per the model's information, it shows that this IP adapter trained using 512 times 512 resolution with 50k steps and 10 to 24 times 1024 for 25k steps. So there's multiple resolution support in Flux, and right now the IP adapter trained on it is also able to support multi dimensions, which is the same as the Flux diffusion model. This is version 1, which is able to run directly in ComfyUI right now. So all we've got to do is download the models, update our XFlux Comfy UI extension or the custom nodes itself. We need to download the Clip Vision L Safe Tensor and the Flux IP Adapter Safe Tensor models. Lastly, there's an example workflow for the IP adapter itself. So download these three files and we can go to Comfy UI and update our XLabs Comfy UI custom nodes. Then we can start playing around with this. So coming back here, I just updated my Xlabs Comfy UI custom nodes. To do this, you go to install the Flux. If you have that before, if you don't have these Xlabs Comfy UI custom nodes, then install that. For existing users, try clicking the Try Update button and you're ready to go. Restart your Comfy UI and load that example workflow to see how it works. So right here, I just drag and drop the example workflow, and this is pretty similar to the IP adapter that we used to play around with IP Adapter Plus for stable diffusions. It's also using a load IP adapter to load a model, of course, and we have the clip vision for that as well. You can choose to use CPU as the processing provider or the GPU for the Flux IP adapter, and then of course you've got the IP adapter apply custom nodes to connect the image connect the IP adapter models and the diffusion model itself. So here they're using the load diffusion models. I'm using the same kind of style manner that I've done before. I like this way better, loading in the UNET files. And of course, when you're using UNET for loading the diffusion model, you can extend the clip models by using dual clip. So using the T5XXL, this is the benefit of running the flux model. The T5XXL is good for prompting, etc. So loading dual clip by default FP16 and clip L. That is the two that I have as well. By the way, if you want to minimize the loading memory of your local machine, you can try the FP8. That's going to be lighter weight compared to the FP16. And going back to here, we've got the XLab sampler, which we have included in the Comfy UI the Xflux Comfy UI custom nodes package. So having this, we connect the models, conditioning, and the latent image for the flux. By default, it doesn't change too much, and we have the image output for that. So it's very similar to what we have in SD 1.5 and SDXL. We have the IP adapter in between the load models and the sampler. In the middle of that, we inject the data in the model connections so that it will influence our output image with the styles that we want from the reference image. So let's try this one and see what we have. Before that, make sure again to download everything and put it in the correct folder. So where's the correct folder? Now right here it says the clip L and you've got to use that and also the IP adapter as well. So whatever the clip L files, the model files, you've got to put in the clip visions just like IP adapter in SD 1.5 as well. The same locations and the IP adapter models that we download in this hugging face are different and we're going to put it in the models Chitex Lab IP adapters folder, not in the models IP adapters folder, like what we used to do in SD 1.5 or SDXL. So again, in here, we have the Clip Visions L. This is what I downloaded and just go through the link in the hugging face or go to the top of the tab, click files and versions. There's another Clip Visions L safe tensor file here as well. And then moving on to the Flux IP adapter, we're going to go back to the folders and I have downloaded one already, which is the Xlab IP adapter. So again, go to the models folder, then scroll down to the Xlab folder name and you will have the auto-generated subfolder from the custom nodes. The IP adapter is already appearing in here. 
after you update to the latest version of the custom nodes or if you've newly downloaded it, it will be appearing here. So drag the IP adapter safe tensor file into this folder, then we can go back to ComfyUI. When we finish downloading these two files, it's the same as what we used to do in IP adapter previous versions in SD 1.5 and SDXL, the same concept. Once we finish with those files, click refresh. You will see a lot of files in here because I have the other clip visions for other models. Right here, I've got my clip visions L that is for my flux IP adapter model. There's only one file in that Flux IP adapter folder, which is this one, the Flux IP adapter safe tensor. Here we can choose CPU or GPU. Again, I will try both to see the difference in performance. Let's check it out. One more thing I've realized is that, as you can see, there's scale image and image prop. You have to make the resolution 1024x1024 if you want to crop your image or resize your image to fit into the IP adapter so the clip visions can understand what the image is showing. This is similar to prepping the image for clip visions. It used to be for IP adapter for stable diffusions, but it's the same concept of cropping your image to the size that fits the clip visions to understand and see the content of the image. So basically, that's the concept. Let's see what we have here. Let's load an image. Okay, let's try one image here that fits the 1024 dimensions. I'm gonna use the upscale resize image. That will be the first example test in here. So right here, we've got everything set. As for the strength of this model, I still haven't tested it yet because it was just released today, not even 24 hours ago. So yeah, there are a lot of things we need to test, run and see different settings, parameters, variables that are going to be different this is the first tryout of the IP adapter from XLab. So let's click run and see how it goes. One more thing, I forgot to change the positive prompt. So hopefully there's some normal thing up here, maybe a living room and the XLab IP adapter text logo somewhere else in the living room, but it should be showing the living room. Okay, so we got the image and it looks like the text XLab is here and IP adapter looks like, like this area. This is supposed to be the IP adapter text, but it doesn't appear that well this time. Well, let's just test it and see what kind of styles we're gonna get. It does look a little bit similar to the reference image, but not too much. I guess we have to tune up the strength model because with the flux models, we have to turn the strength up. Previously in the LoRa model as well, we used a minimum of one, and sometimes we had to use three to four in LoRa to make the styles appear. So I guess that will be a similar case for IP adapter as well. Let's try two and see what we get. I'll use the same prompt. Living room with a wall banner showing text XLab. And this time let's try other text. Let's try, let's try our channel's name and see what we get. So hopefully the style is going to be similar although it won't be exactly the same style as this living room. Once I set the strength model tuned up to two, hopefully there's more similarity. Okay, so for strength model boosted to two, you will get deformations. The image noise is going to be too much. So I suppose that won't happen. Let's go back to one and see. Okay, so we got the result and it looks like the couch is following the style of this couch. Let's bring it to the reference, the couch and then the blanket that is half covering the seat here is able to follow this style. But then the other rest of the image elements do not do the same in this output image. By default, the sampler is tuned up to 50. So this time, let's try to tune it back, this sampling step to 50, and see what we get. Okay, so we got this generated, but it doesn't look like the same living room. I would say this IP adapter is not going to be like what we used to have in stable diffusions, almost replicating the same image from the reference image to bring it to the generated image. Rather than that, it is just using similar styles of elements and the pattern of those couches and wall that is going to be replicated in the generated image. For example, we got the gray color couch and it's going to appear with the one that we have in the generated image and then the gray color wall as well. 
but the other new stuff going on in the generated image is mostly influenced by the flux model itself. I have not defined that the banner is black color. It looks like it's going for some kind of style like that, and it doesn't look too cool. But yeah, they mentioned that this is version 1. It does not perform really well or stable yet. They are, you know, continuing the development right now. Yeah, like in here, they've already declared that the limitations of IPA adapter currently working in beta are not guaranteed to produce good results, etc. So it will take some time. Eventually, in the later versions of the Flux IP adapter, hopefully they can overcome some style similarity issues. That's what happened with the IP adapter we used to have and like to use for image generation. I mean, it won't be doing like a very low denoise image to image process, but you know, some elements that, for example, in the Animate Diff V2V with IP adapter we did a lot before, we can replicate the character outfit and etc. to do dancing or some action that heavily relied on IP adapter to do the styling for character and background as well. So if the background can't be influenced too much, then that's not going to be a reliable model for productions. I guess they'll have to improve that in the later versions of IP adapter. Let's try some character images. Uh, hopefully that will be something better. So again, we're using one of the scene images from my AI videos posted on x.com. And let's test this IP adapter to see if it's going to work or not for a similar image. Because I've tried a lot in the Stable Diffusion's IP adapter. It works normally perfect with images like this and replicates similar styles. It doesn't need to be adding any text prompts in the IP adapter plus. So let's see if that's going to be working as well. So giving it a straight test. Here we got the result and nope, we didn't generate good stuff from this image using an empty text prompt. We got some, yeah, of course, a dark room and ladies and she doesn't know what she's doing. It's like she's possessed by a ghost. But because I saw these examples from what they claim, using the image and without any prompt is able to do a similar image as well as this image i'm not sure why it's happening totally different when we're using the same settings of workflow and it's not able to replicate this here so yeah i think I'll, I'll have to try you know some more images with this ip adapter not really exactly proper settings i think that will be the way to load this ip adapter or it's just not ready yet it is you know, as what they claim, just a very new beta model. Maybe that's not going to generate good results. So we'll have to see what the future looks like for these IP adapter models. Maybe we'll have to try out their new versions or other companies are going to release a better one. So I'll try more and see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.